I've got a surprise. Let's see if this works. Are we ready for our big surprise? I think we're ready. Um, let me take a look at something. I've got a surprise. Okay, great. I've got my surprise lined up. Ooh, and it's all perfectly lined up. I think this could be uh this could be a disaster, but I've got my surprise lined up. I'm feeling hopeful for this. Let's talk about Kill Tony. Let's go back to Kill Tony. Tony Hinchcliffe and Brian Redband's show on the Death Squad Network. We've certainly been making fun of this show for a long time. But before we started bringing up this show, I want to take you back to the beginning. When Kill Tony first started, they did not have a band. They were in the small belly room of the comedy store, they call it, on the Sunset Strip. And instead of a band, episodes 1 through 34 of the Kill Tony show had a character named the Iron Patriot. The Iron Patriot uh, was, well, I don't know if you remember this character from the Iron Man movies, Iron Patriot. It was, uh, who played that? Don Cheadle? Was he the Iron Patriot? Or I, I don't remember. But it's like a guy in an Iron Man suit. Kill Tony is filmed on the Sunset Strip, a couple blocks away from Hollywood Boulevard, where all those superhero guys get up in the costumes and they try to make money. I don't know how this happened, but Kill Tony, when they started their show, they had the Iron Patriot. The Iron Patriot was head of security. He was the third mic. I'm going to show you what I mean. He was in place of the band. Take a look at this. Here we are. So there he is. Look Patriot. at this. Patriot. He came to the show in the flesh. Put your hands together for the Iron Patriot, everybody. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's get into this. Here we are. Here is a video from uh, a very old episode of Kill Tony. You can see it's in a different room. They were in the small space. There's Red Band. There's Hinchcliffe. And there is the Iron Patriot. It's Iron Man. Did I say that? Iron Man. It's, he's got the real Iron Man suit. He's got like an $8,000 Chinese replica, the eyes light up, the chest lights up. He's a robot. Let's listen to his appearance. It's from Kill Tony 34. Let's see what this is about. I will lead these new Avengers Let's into watch. battle against anyone who would threaten our way of life. I am the Iron Patriot. Fuck yeah, that's our head of security here, making sure we're all safe yeah. at all times. I had a good weekend, Tony. Yeah. I came out of my costume on Friday and Saturday to the main room. Mm -hmm. I was looking very stylish. I had my 5950 Iron Man cap. I had my Nike Air Force One Iron Man shoes. My Under Armour Iron Man shirt. I had my all-white Adidas warm-up suit. Okay. And uh, many of the so comedians... So, I enjoyed the Iron Patriot. His appearances were very funny, and they always did a back and forth with him. And what was so funny is he was this really talkative guy. It didn't really line up with what you would, uh, you know, assume a robot would be. So they'd have this back and forth. They'd open the show with him, and it was a funny bit. Then, all of a sudden, the Iron Patriot disappeared. He was on episodes 1 through 34. He was a permanent staple of this show, and then all of a sudden, he was not there. I'm going to play you a clip from Kill Tony, episode 35, where Tony starts discussing why the Iron Patriot is missing. Listen to this. So, yeah, it was an exciting week. And then, as you can tell, for the first time since episode one. Wait, give me a second, because I brought over my whole dang section here. Bring that back. It's easy. Okay, here we go. We're right back on track. Episode 35, where is the Iron Patriot? There is no Iron Patriot here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no, Brian. What? What's I got a phone call. I get a phone Listen call. Listen to this. While I am having coffee, doing some writing. You're not gonna believe the day this. Day after Listen. getting dug with high and the Iron Patriot quit Kill no. Tony. Yep. In a stunning no. turn of events. The Iron, the Iron Patriot The Iron Patriot quit. Remember that word quit. What did I tell you about Kumia at the beginning of this thing? I quit Compound Media. And then what did Kumia turn it into? He was fired! Here's Tony himself saying the Iron Patriot quit. Now listen to why he quit. You're not going to believe this. 
You are not going to freaking believe why the Iron Patriot quit. Listen. Kill Tony. Yep. In a stunning turn of events, the Iron Patriot's words were, uh, were he's gotten uh, too big for the show. Nope. That when I'm ready to move on to Listen. Comedy Central or Jash, that he'll be waiting for my phone call. But until we are up to a higher production quality <gasps> and not on the Death Squad network, he will not be working with the show. Until we are up to a higher production quality and not on Brian Redband's Death Squad network, he will not be working with them. He quit. Let's hear some more. These, are, these were his words, at which point... I'm on the sidewalk. I, I took the call inside the coffee shop. At this point, after that, I'm in the, on the sidewalk yelling like a crazy man. And I was thinking, you know how that you have that third eye that's sort of like, man, I bet you one of these cars driving by right now is going to see me yelling like a crazy man, which I, I never am doing. But there's a point when he's telling me all of this, you know, a guy who we've sort of had a bond, you know. Just and, the uh, night before, actually, I saw his cute little flip phone that he had. Keep listening. Because he was using MapQuest that he printed out on paper and it had failed him. And he was 15 minutes or 10 minutes late to this you know, meeting to go to Doug's podcast. Right. And, and there was a car to pick us up and he was using a printed paper map. Yeah. Don't worry about so that. Here, yeah, let's skip ahead. Robot, his guys know what that is. And we also noticed that when he was parked, he was having trouble. Okay. He slams cars. Wears the Hold armor on. all day. So when he's out of the armor, he's very strong. <laughs> Ex-girlfriend. I mean, like, it's a very standout problem. It's not like we're like trying to find something. Like you could hear this door. Sl okay, they're talking about a door back, slamming. Don't worry SUV, about this. He slams the door. So then when we get to the place, Here he gets go. out of the car and he, and he, the driver goes, hey, I'll help you with your bags. And the Patriot goes, yeah, I'd really like that. But the way he said it sort okay, of... Don't worry about this. Whole Skip ahead. That's no big deal. Like, like giving, Forget you know. his car door problem. Forget Thank the you, fact Tony. that he's had a dog lick ice cream off of his genitalia. Yeah. Uh, Several times. Listen. You know, there's a lot of things that we've talked about with him on this show that I can look past. But what I ended up yelling ab at him about on that sidewalk was a thing of loyalty and... Ooh, here uh, we go. You know, he was basically saying that he didn't want to work with you or the Death Squad network anymore. Yeah, me. The guy that offered him a cell phone for $500. I got a brand new cell phone, not going to use it. And I saw his little phone. I was going to just give him the phone. Listen. I've, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was promoting his CD on iTunes. Just no reason. I have no reason to do this. I'm just trying to help him out. I, yeah, and that's what I was saying to the Patriot was that he's insane for uh, that. That you can, you can, you'll never be able to build relationships in any form of show business if you burn each bridge that you go uh -oh. to. So the next day, or no, that day uh, that he quit, not even an hour later, I'm in communication with Doug Benson, who says the Iron Patriot just asked if he could be a regular on my show. Listen to this stuff. At which Doug replied, I could see the response time was so fast. It was so fast. And he goes, no chance of that happening. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was funny because it was a one-time thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Patriots always hinted at wanting to jump ship. I guess I always truly deep inside thought it was a joke, but... There you go. He's done it. And a lot of, you know, I was just, the crazy thing is, two weeks ago I was at Target, and this tweet's still out there in the universe. I found this little Iron Patriot mask, and I go, okay. wow, $7. And this is where they bring in the fake Iron Patriot, and they started using other comedians and interns to fill in for the Iron Patriot. True story, Tiffany Haddish, big celebrity Oscar nominee Tiffany Haddish, played the Iron Patriot. <laughs> in future Kill Tony shows. So, why am I showing you all of this? Well, because the other day I got an email from the Iron Patriot. And you know what? Instead of reading you that email, I'm just gonna do this.
Let's see if it works. What are we doing? Jeff, are you Hello? there? Hi, Jeff. Turn, okay, hold on a second. Turn that okay. camera on, hit the camera icon. I just hit it, I just hit it. Did you see me now? Oh my God, you look just like Fred Armisen. This is wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen from Kill Tony, it's the guy who played the Iron Patriot. Hello. You How's look amazing. I thought you were an Asian guy. You are, you're really handsome. Oh, well, thank you. Wow, this is incredible. Yeah, people used to think I looked like Polly Shore in the 90s when yeah. I sang in the band Dirty Crabber. I could see that. And look at that's your Iron Patriot suit right yeah. there. Oh, in yeah. The I, I got it. I just last minutes I've been putting in a position so and I got the t-shirt to kill Tony. You look that they made amazing. for me in the beginning. Gerard Horton was was nice enough to make that for me. So and, uh, yeah, I love it and it looks great. You look great and I want to uh thank you again because you didn't know how Skype worked yesterday. I want to tell you something. This is the best Skype setup that any ah. of our guests have ever had. You figured this out. You look Thank incredible. You, I did Skype a while back. Someone interviewed me, but they didn't have the video section. So I was excited to think what I could do visually in this one, you know, so it's, it's a lot of fun. So you reached out to me. How did you know yeah. about me? What made you reach out to me? Okay, well, so I, I must watch the same podcast as you because I saw, and it's so good to put those titles on the thumbnail to yeah. get people's attention because I saw the thing where you said, um, red band should be fired. So obviously that grabbed my attention. Yes. And I go on there and I just see, you know, all the comments and everyone. It's it's the world I know a lot about. So that's why I reached out yes. to you because I thought, and I didn't even know you were in Chicago. I didn't know where you were until I looked into sure. the details. But um, yeah, it's it's. I, I was watching um, Dead Air yesterday with Brian Holtzman. Brian Holtzman, and sure. I think you might have helped them fix it because it. I saw comments where people said the sound is better. So that must, you must oh, have helped okay. out when you sent that message to him on Facebook. Well, I hope not. And you <laughs> know what, uh, Jeff, I want to tell you a little bit about me. I have seen every one of your appearances on really? Kill Tony. I know everything that went down. Even before you emailed me, I knew the entire story about how you were on episodes one through 34. Then you wow. did Getting Dug with High with the guys, which I think we oh, even yeah. watched clips on when it happened. We were watching that on oh, this yeah. show years ago when it happened. And then, Tony, you quit the show. Tony yeah. comes on. He tells the story. And he pretends that you're crazy. That's oh, yeah. when you quit. Oh, yeah. And he's telling everybody that you were a stalker. He's telling oh, yeah. everybody that you were uh, insane. And they and yeah. now he's revised it. I want to let you know something, and you probably know this. He's telling people that he fired you now. Did well, you know that? I left the show. Yeah. I, I was frustrated with Red Band's production all the way back in 2013. Wow. The, the, the thing that would kill me is he would wait two and three weeks to release these shows on Vimeo and iTunes. Yes. And we couldn't get any momentum. We weren't on YouTube. So I, I couldn't believe. And then on the way down to Getting Doug, I was on Getting Doug with them on January 22nd, 2014. Yeah. They have an SUV come pick you up because they don't want you to drive stone. Yeah. But the SUV went to Tony. So we, me and Red Band had to meet Tony down at his place and we get in the SUV and on the way down there, I confronted Red Band. I said, why are you waiting so long? Because on Twitter, I was <laughs> seeing all these tweets all the time. Where's the show? Where? Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're so lucky to have these fans and we're not releasing the damn show. Exactly. So on the way down to getting Doug, I confront him. I said, Brian, why are you taking so long to release the shows? And before that, I kind of gave him the benefit of the doubt because I thought maybe it's a strategy. Maybe he's like holding yeah, maybe. off to make him really want it. Sure. And I, I you know, I could respect that. Of if course. He wants to do that. That's cool. But he, when I asked him that, he he responded. He said, it takes six hours to upload it. 
Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, I didn't say anything, but I'm thinking to myself, we're waiting two and three weeks yes. because it takes six hours to upload it. If I was producing Kill Tony, it would be up six hours after the show ended. Exactly. 100%. I, I mean, I, I'm exaggerating, Listen, but I could at least get it on the next day. Jeff, I do the exact same thing as him. I run a show and I've been running my show since 2003. Our shows are up within hours after they're done in beautiful HD quality. 1080p. Well, Red Pen gets it now. He gets the well, momentum. No. He gets making the thumbnails look Let's pretty. Let's not say that. <laughs> he's, he's getting it all now. It's all coming together. I I still wish the show could be filmed better. Yeah. Oh, of course. I, it's so like, amateur. I mean, it looks like somebody is filming it well, from the crowd with their cell phone. Well, the stationary camera does have its place. I mean, you'll even hear Billy Bob Thornton in the commentary for sure. Sling Blade. He talks about how he likes the stationary camera because you always get everybody's reaction. But having said that, of course, did you see when Jamie was filming the show like three years ago and, and actually cutting it with angles and yeah. post ups? And you know, why can't Brian? Jamie that and by the way, up, you know, that they're making they claim they're making so much money. Brian Redband's buying Tesla's. Did you see his Tesla? Oh, yeah. That's what's incredible about this is the content is so on. It doesn't even matter with all this production. Yeah. I mean, the sound never really bothered me because I just adjusted it. And I always thought maybe it needs some compression. I don't know how much he uses of it, that. It needs a lot of work. Listen, if Brian could afford a $90,000 Tesla, he could afford beautiful cameras. This thing should look like a TV show at this point. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wish if it got picked up to TV, it seems like they could turn into a contest with money and prizes like all the other talent shows. But I don't think Tony wants to go that route. But... If they do it, you know, because you see all the talent shows on TV, it just seems natural exactly. to, turn it in to give some money and some prizes. And and I mean, it could be it could be huge. I mean, I don't really know people, you know, half the, the Kill Tony fans. There's three different groups. There's the groups that never have seen me on the show because they're not like you. Exactly. They don't go all the way back. Sure. Then there's the people that hate me and they're the people who love me and and on one of the kill tonys it's funny bobby lee even said that he said to be a star you got to have half, half the people hate you yes. and half the people love you i agree with that you know so i got that kind of going on cuz if you go to the kill tony youtube page i don't know do you ever go to that page of course every day okay so you see that they have that 5 year anniversary yeah. video right on the start yeah. Well, I, I'm right at the beginning of that featured, and they even did another shot of me asking Tiffany Haddish a question before she was famous. Yeah. Way back in 2000. I was just bringing that so up before. They don't, so, I don't think they've, yeah, I don't think they've severed ties with me completely. The storyline is too good. I mean, even if you brought me back five years from now, it's going to just get better and better. I mean, well, you would tune in. Wouldn't you tune in? If I they would say, love it. The Iron Patriots coming back. I mean, I would love it. Now, Jeffrey, let's talk about this. Let's talk about where it started going bad. You quit the show. You didn't feel respected enough. They weren't treating you right. They were treating you like a joke, right? Those yeah. Well, I mean, they. It's good and bad. I mean, I love Brian Redband. I mean, I, let's I went stick there. To, when let's I went stick down, to the bad. When I went down on June tenth, two thousand thirteen, for the first time, I was going to find Brian Redband. I didn't. I didn't know I was going to see Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah. See, I saw I saw met Tony Hinchcliffe the first time in April of 2013. I was I see I used to work on Hollywood Boulevard as as Iron Man and but this day I was in my Cap, I was in my Captain America outfit and that was the first time Tony was on his way to the bus to go to the Ice House Chronicles. And I stopped him and I said I'd seen him on that show and he said, "Oh, I'm on my way there now." And I told him and this was like a month before I got this Iron Patriot suit that took like a year and a half to get. It yeah, from like China, just... right? And then so I told Tony at that point, I said, I'll probably be coming to see you when I get this suit. But I thought I was going to be seeing him at the Ice House Chronicles. I didn't know he was. I thought I was going. Did you remember Red Band had that show, Death Squad Secret Show? Of course. That that's what I thought I was going through. But I was so busy getting my costume ready, I didn't even notice that show had ended. And he was starting a new show called Hinchcliffe's Notes Wow! with Tony. See, people don't realize when I first showed up, the show was called Hinchcliffe's Notes. It was the second episode of Hinchcliffe's Notes. And by the way, I was planning on coming the week before, but I chickened out. I don't think people realize the courage it took to do this shit. I mean, it takes 30 minutes to put this on. I put it on my apartment the way shoot. up at Wilcox and Sunset, 
and rode the bus three miles down, standing up in this suit to the comedy store. And I did that for six months. That's why I'm a legend at that place. Yes. I'm, I'm banned now because I don't know if you saw well, that let's video talk where about I stormed Jeff, the stage Jeff, in 2017. Jeff, that was incredible. Jeff! I know you're excited. You're giving us a great story. I want to thank you again for giving us this great story. Let me ask you a few things. Don't worry. We got some time. I, I could go back to the beginning. There's more in the beginning. I'm going to go back. Let me go about. back to the beginning. On episode 34, that was your last appearance on the Kill Tony show. Tony came back the next day and they trashed you. I mean, oh, yeah, they, 35. It yes. was with Bert Kreischer. Yes, and we played a bit of that, we played a bit of that episode. They trashed you. Now, you made an appearance. I think you came back on the 100th episode. Oh, they yeah, had you that back. That was an epic show. Now, oh, my God. let's talk about. Let's oh, go to the big incident. And I'm going to play a clip. Do you mind if I play a clip? Yeah, do what you want. I love okay. when you play clips. Great. Sit there for a second. Let me okay, play this. I'll comment. You might not be able to hear this. Um, I want to read what you wrote me. I returned to Kill Tony one more time in my street clothes in 2017. I stormed the stage and was removed from the club by security. I'm going to play this clip, okay, Jeff? So just sit there for a sec. Let me show my audience what Tony did to you. They're going to be, yeah. they're not going to like this at all. And then we're going to talk about what actually happened that day. Okay. Okay. Now I want you to remember something. We're in your corner. We know you're a good guy and we know that Tony is out there slandering you. And we're going to get to the bottom of this today. Okay. You're going to get some retribution Thank today. Okay. I need, help. I need help, brother. I know you do. Let me show people this clip of you Coming on the stage, I think this was a very friendly thing you did, in fact. And we're going to show... I, they, I really was not... I was naive enough to think that they might roll with it and just let me come on stage and maybe even let me be one of the judges because I knew the fans would love it. They'd love to catch up and see what I'm doing. Of and course. It's just... It, he's like he's holding the fans hostage from me. He won't let me... Because And he's taking sides with the fans that hate me, you know? Okay, so here it is. And Jeff, just uh, kind of keep quiet real quick while I play this clip. It's three minutes long, so hang tight. Here okay, we go. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. Here we go. Awesome. Okay, Two of our favorite guests, they've both been on the show. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. What are you doing? Whoa, what the fuck is oh. that? You got to get him out of okay, here. Okay, there it was. And this happened so quick. Let me explain what's happening. Jeff, who we're talking to now, is there in the Comedy Store main room, and he, as a joke, runs up on stage and waves to the camera and waves to the people, just as a throwback. Oh my God, it's Iron Patriot. Let's watch that again, but pay attention to how Tony deals with the situation. Here we go. Some, two of our favorite guests, they've both been on the show. Oh my, God, oh my God, oh my God, what are you doing? Whoa, what the fuck is that? You gotta get okay. I'll explain for our audio listeners. Jeff runs up, and he's very sweet. He's just waving. Tony freaks out. He jumps out of his chair. He stands up. He's shaking, and he starts going, whoa, whoa, what are you? Tony thought he was going to be killed because he's yeah. been talking so much trash about the Iron Patriot that he thought maybe the Iron Patriot was coming to kill him. Jeff would never do that. You know him. Let me play you the entire clip. Jeff, we're just going to watch it. Thank you for being patient with us, Jeff. Here we yeah, go. Awesome. Two of our favorite guests. They've both been on the show. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What are you doing? Whoa. What the fuck is that? You got to get him out of here. What's going on? No, Listen you got to gotta leave, dude. No, you can't do that. You have to You have to get him out of here. That's the former Iron Patriot, Jeff Crabtree, and he just stormed the stage. You have to get him all the way out of here. That is so crazy, no, Iron Patriot. Not. I'm so disappointed in you. Wow. That was, un I thought that was now, it. Now, at this point, Tony is standing up. No one in the crowd is scared. No one even thought that was crazy. But Tony is shaking. Yeah. And he, he goes on for three minutes about how you should be arrested. You should be thrown out of the club. I'm going to play a little bit more, Jeff. Hang tight. I thought that was truly it. I saw him coming up. I pictured this numerous times. He uh, was uh, the entire, uh, he was part of the, he was the band for the first, like, uh, what, 50-some, 60, 70-some episodes? 34, Tony. So Tony is so shook that he's going, he was a, a part of the first 70 episodes? Uh, uh. Yeah. It's a couple, 40 more. <laughs> episodes of the show. He was the Iron Patriot. He wore a suit. 
slowly over time, we found out that he was <laughs> insane. <laughs> he, he's been messaging us for a, a little over a year or two nope. continuously to no response. Wow. And he just jumped up on the stage. And you saw that live. That was a live part of the show. If you're wondering why we call ourselves the number one live comedy podcast in the world, that's why. Not number He's one so pre scared comedy right here. podcast. That was creepy. I, I thought it was a biker. I'm I thought, he lost, I thought he lost his bicycle and he was like coming up to his I ass saw or that something. fucking face. I checked both hands to make sure there were no weapons. Oh, but God. if there was a weapon, I was going to do this crazy front kick. I was half a second oh. away from blasting this way. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's what it would have sounded like. That was a very scary moment. I can't believe he thinks that that's okay. Yeah, well, I don't think he... I think that's the whole thing. He doesn't really think much. We have to get, like, a restraining order or wow. something. This yeah. just got weird. Yeah. Shit just got very real. Yeah. And he, like, looked at the camera and shit. Like, Gross. we're going to edit that yeah, out. Yeah, we'll definitely edit that out. Oh! Wow, that's crazy. So only you guys will ever know that that ever happened just And now. us! Shout out. Make some noise for the Comedy Store staff getting him out of here quickly. Wowzers. I, w I was too stoned, I didn't even flinch. <laughs> I just saw colors coming at me. That's an interesting thing. We have a real mental health issue in this <gasps> country that needs to be dealt with. Like, people like that. Like, that guy wears an Iron Man costume for... Okay, so Tony goes on, Jeff, to trash you here and paint you as mentally ill... You know, I spoke with your doctor this morning. He cleared your name. You're not mentally ill at all. We do have a lot of mentally ill here in L.A., but yeah, I'm not one of them. Of course not. So, and do you hear Red Band say, oh, I'm going to edit that out? He knows that's gold. Yeah. He's, now, if you, I listened to a recent episode. I don't know if you watch Riffin with Griffin. I love Riffin with Griffin. Okay, Riffin. Brian Red Band was on Riffin and yes, Griffin. And we they were watched talking that. about. They were talking about how to get your audience numbers up for your podcast. And Red Band said, you need drama. Yes. What do, you, what do you think he's talking about when he, when I left that show on 35, he even says the, the, the viewership went way up after that. I mean, it, that's when it started to take off because people love train wrecks. Exactly. They love drama. So and Tony, they still, they still love it. I Tony mean, wanted that edited out because he looked so poor in that clip. He was so oh, he scared. Said, like, he, he said he's gonna kick me. He was, he was no. shivering in fright. I mean, shivering. So you just ran up. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. You were doing I mean, a simple joke. You thought that everyone would laugh. Now, were you taken out by security that day? Oh yeah, I. That was a crazy night. I can't believe I even had the guts to do that, you know. So I yeah. go up to Sunset Boulevard. I find a place to park, which is not easy. I had to pay to park. Wow. And I walk over there, and they sit me in the comedy store. They happen to put me on the side, and I was sitting there, and I remember a girl coming back to her seat and kind of looking at me like, who is this guy? Because I was sitting there. And another thing, uh -oh. I came in a uniform I came in a uniform that Tony knows. Exactly. One time I came to the co I only came to the comedy store to watch comedy like one weekend. I came to see him at the main room do comedy. And I wore this outfit with the gold Iron Man hat and the shirt and stuff. So I was making it easy for him. He I could have come in another uh, Exactly. He knew and he wouldn't even know who he it knew was, you were still but, wearing an Iron Man shirt or whatever you yeah, were wearing. Yeah, so I made it easy for him. I know okay. see I just wanted to get on camera because I knew the fans would love it and they did. If if you go on Reddit after those kind of things, there's all kinds of speculation. I can't just, go it there. It makes it so much fun. It's just, I mean, you, they know the game, and I know the game. We all know the game. Come so, on. So let's it's do like, this, because we only have a few more minutes. I want to thank you for letting me, uh, you know, uh, letting us, uh, you know, be aware of what happened here. But you're here right now. You saw that Brian Redman has copy, uh, copyright claimed me. He took down our video. Did you see that? No. Oh, you didn't hear about this. This is no. our big news today. I made that video, the one that caught your attention about his audio. Yeah. He filed a false copyright claim. He no. had our video taken off YouTube. You know, one person's constructive criticism is another's trolling. I mean, yep. it depends on who you look at it. It's how, you know, how you look at it. I mean, it's just, just if I could say one more thing about just how mystical this story is about me going to kill Tony. You know, I told you I waited a year and a half for that suit. And after four months, they told me they hadn't even started and had legal problems and issues. I didn't even know if I was going to get it. 
it was an incredibly long process. Yeah. I thought I might have lost five thousand dollars. But anyway, when I finally got down to that comedy store on June 10th, 2013, who do you think's the first comedian I saw outside the comedy store? This is very mystical part of the store. I don't know. Brody, uh, Brody Stevens. Brody Stevens, who is alive and well. I saw him at Target three days ago. Oh, well, it must have been the ghost of Brody Stevens. Wow. But anyway, he's, I saw him and I immediately told him, I said, I've seen you on the Ice House Chronicles. And he was real nice to me. He couldn't believe I was wearing something like that walking down the street. And I told him I was going to see Brian Redman. And then I found out he ended up being on that first show I was on, which was called Hinchcliffe's Notes. And then the next week is when that became Kill Tony. Yeah. They, you know, they portray it. Tony Hinchcliffe, did you know about this? That, Some what? people say, this is alleged, a lot of people say Tony Hinchcliffe had a lot to do with Brody's death. Did you know that? Well, it's just close friends going through a lot of no, stuff. No, no, no. Like they the said he they, tormented that guy until he put that noose up. Well, it's so much well, pressure everybody's right. under. So much pressure. I mean, you hear Brody talking in his last week's just the pressure yes. of the social media and well, how much you have no, to do I think to it was to more Tony. It. I think it was more Tony. Let's talk about this because I only have a few more minutes with you, so I want to make them count. You were on episodes one through 34. Wait, oh, hey, one more thing before you move on. You I did see that video. I saw that video where he had the fight with Brody. Is that what you're talking about, where he had the fight? You yes. Can see there's a lot of and that's where Brody, that yeah. was really the turning point, that well, video. Bro Brody, I was around Brody. Brody, when... Tony's ego just got way out of control. When that show yes. killed Tony, just got even yes. a little fame. He and then when he got on Joe Rogan and became one of his boys, oh my god, That's his where, ego yes, exploded. It, yes, exactly. Now and I want to real mean. He can get really mean, and yeah. Brody even told him See? before he died to stop being so mean. And and Tony said he listened, and he's getting more work. But so it's not it's not just me. There's a lot of people. I mean, you know the comedian Justin Martindale? Yes, the gay guy. I love him. I do Uber, and I happened to pick him oh. up one time. And he, oh, my God, he went off about Tony, that Tony was bragging, saying he's the best comedian, all this wow. stuff. Just, really? I, it was... <laughs> When I, when I went to the 100th episode, you would not believe the verbal lashing that Tony gave me when I showed up at the, that was 2015, when I showed up to do the 100th episode with Joe Rogan. Wow. Tony just gave me a verbal lashing that he was creating an empire. And that, <gasps> I mean, if people just heard him talk, the oh narcissism of this person, it's just, I mean, we really need to have another time yes. to call me, Mike, because to go this, over is, I'm ta this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I, I know. I tell you so much stuff and i don't i'm not trying to say i'm perfect i, I of course there's not. some things see i didn't have uber back then i would have been more patient if i was just not having patience because i saw it was going to take so long and i was just thinking when i got on getting doug and saw the way he was doing it he completely got it it was live on youtube and I even asked Doug to be on the show because I was just wanted so bad to be on a professional show. Yes, and Brian and let's, and was let's not, not forget about ah, let's not forget about Jeff, all Brian Redband's substance abuse issues. Let's not forget about oh. that. The man is crazy. I can't believe he's found a way to portray me as crazy. Exactly. Did you hear some of the things he would say on the show that he did? And he said one night he was at the comedy store. He was walking up to girls drunk, saying, "Let's go to San Francisco and fuck." Wow, I mean, that's a me too. Oh my God, it's just unbelievable that right. they turned this to make it look like I'm unhinged exactly. and going crazy. Exactly, exactly. Now, how much did Tony pay you for each appearance? Nothing, I have not made Nothing. one dollar off this oh, show. Oh no, really? He didn't pay you? But Tony Hinchcliffe has made millions of dollars. Dollar Tony off. Hinchcliffe claims that he's made millions of dollars. You know, you have a lawsuit you could probably put oh, together. this could be a defamation case. Let's I, do I it. I know how hard it is to prove defamation, Defamation, I can help. but when you maliciously set out to destroy someone's reputation, make them look insane, make them look like they're hard to work with. If that's not defamation, I mean, I'm not going to do it because I'm not that type of person. Yeah. But this, I just cannot tell you. Wait, how wait, much wait, this Jeff. Is, wait, Jeff. let me say one more thing. I can't tell you how much this has hurt my feelings. I like Jeremiah, the guy that replaced me, and I even like Pat. I think that they're just doing different things. I, yes. I don't like it when people try to say they're better than me and they took the show to a new evolution and stuff yes. because that suit, the visual that I created with that suit, they don't have that awesome visual anymore. Absolutely yeah, not. Have, Jeremiah okay. does cute characters. He'll play a mailman. He'll, you know, play a stewardess. He'll play 
feminist Stacey. Jeff, they're, He's they're, good they're, at the we're going to run out of That's time, good, Jeff. We what, got... I, what I did with a cop Jeff! guy is a whole different thing. This guy doesn't listen. Jeff, we're going to run out of time here. I've got to ask you one more question. Okay. Is Tony Hinchcliffe involved in S&M and bondage? I don't know anything okay. about well, that. I mean, there were moments in the beginning where I was wondering if he really might be gay or something. Wow. But, I mean, he's hetero. He likes he likes women. Okay. Did you did you just see him on Polly Shores? He just did that. Do you watch Polly Shores Random Rants? That's like one of the funniest podcasts. Jeff, now. I'm so we we have to go to commercial. They're cutting you off short. I want to thank you so much for everything you've provided today. And let's wrap this up. Tony Hinchcliffe is a bad guy, huh? He's out of well, control. There, Over there's, the next there's, few weeks, you should write down too, everything. Right? That... He's not going to listen to you. Okay. Sorry. He's going to railroad right through. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. Say what you're going to say. I was going to say, over the next few weeks, if you remember something that Tony might have done to you that you can't think of right now, you should write it down in a little diary, and maybe in a few weeks we'll check in with you and see if you remember any good Tony stories to tell us. I, I could go on. I mean, I could go on right now another hour. I haven't even told you all the stuff that happened in the beginning. Can you I mean, shorten it? Give us top wait 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 best one or top two top two most well, evil just, Tony moments the two most okay, worst this, things this is, the, this is the craziest one yes see in, in September of 2013 right before we were going to the L A podcast festival he co- we talked on the phone and that's when I told him I didn't like something he that Brian Redband said about me on dysentery I just couldn't believe he yeah. said something. I was trying to do another sh- podcast where I was going to promote the show and he was mad because he didn't want me talking about the show and I was mad because if he released it on time, it would be okay for me to talk about the show. But, you know, it's just that tension. I couldn't believe the lack of respect he was giving me. And then I told Tony about it and Tony flat out, this is what Tony said to me. He said, oh, don't worry. If that happens again, I'll take you and we'll find another producer. Really? See, that's how... That's how hot I was then. I was so, so Tony hot. was willing was, to get rid of Red Band. This is oh, big. Yeah. Tony was. Well, no, I didn't say to get rid of Red Band. Until no, of course I not. Him. But Tony After would have gotten rid of Red Band had he thought that it would make the show better and he would get more money. Well, Red Band's so connected with Joe Rogan, he's not going to do that. Okay. But when I when I left after getting Doug with High in like you know January of 2014, after I. I called him that next day, and that's when we had the really bad argument. And I told him that I think we should leave. I want to leave Red Band. I, we need to get another yeah. producer and get this thing going. But he refused to do it. And then I didn't think he was going to tell Red Band, but because because we had already had that talk the last fall. That sure. He said, he said, "Tell me if it happens again, we'll get another producer." So I thought he wouldn't be that ruthless. But that's when he went on Kill Tony Thirty Five and. And scorched earth with me and just and and completely and told Red Band I betrayed him. So I got a really bad rap. I ended up being I just wanted the show to be better. And you know, of course. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I tested the waters. I was running I was wearing that suit too much. I was wearing it out on the boulevard. I was getting extremely burnt out. I was, was going I was kind of sure. going insane in a way Jeff, just from let's keep being this tired. about Tony. Please tell us one more Tony Hinchcliffe secret that we would be appalled to hear. Um, God, I'm trying to, I, I just can't think, oh, I can't Don't think say that because, that. you know what, Tony is going to see this, and if you fail to say a bad thing about him, th- he's going to go, gonna see uh, this? Car- I don't think he wants oh, to yeah. see an interview with me. Oh, no, 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 he's watching right now, I've gotten confirmation of this, and if he watches this, and you leave here today without giving us one more bad thing, this is what I- he's going to do. See, I told you he was insane. See, I didn't even, wa- I, that thing you played me with me storming the stage and him talking, I didn't even... And the part Red Band said, I didn't even hear that. I never listened to the whole thing because it's so painful. Yeah. Well, I they're going around. The I'll tell on. you this. Jeff, I want to remind you, they're painting you as mentally ill. They're telling yeah. everybody that you need to be locked up, that they need a restraining order. They're, oh, yeah. they're, they're defaming well, well, let's, let's, your the, name. The last, wait, the last message Tony sent me when he text messaged me, he said, I screwed up. I'm banned from the comedy store for a while. This was after I yeah. stood on the stage. He said for a while. So I don't know what that means when he said for a while. You know, Joe Rogan was banned from the comedy store. Exactly. So it's kind now, of a badge of honor. I might come back at some well, point. 
All right. If you could think of anything else, will you email me? Will you keep me also, in the loop? Also, let's, another point that's uh, that's overriding this whole thing is that even if I was on the best behavior, I'm doing a costume and a character that's licensed. You know, Iron Patriot is a licensed. Of course. Name, so, so even so, that's been a stressful thing too. Is I don't know when we're gonna get. We could have got cease and desist orders at any time. Let's write to Warner so Brothers. Let's get like back I going. Was going I was going through the whole thing alone. This was a very lonely thing <laughs> okay. to go through that I couldn't relate because they didn't know how hard it was. I mean, I know they were going through their own struggles. I'm sure Red Band's doing a lot better now than he was back in 2013. I'm doing a lot better now. So it's a shame we couldn't have had better communication because we went from bad communication to no communication. And this will hopefully be a lesson to people is how bad it is to not have communication. Well, I'll tell you this, Jeff. We appreciate your story. We love what you did. And we don't want to uh, let you leave empty handed here. So I heard your story. You talked about how you had to take a lot of cabs and Ubers over to the comedy store. So what but, we're going to do. But, wait, shut up, Jeff. Up. Shut up. What we're going to do here for you today. Because we're so nice, Red Bar is going to cover one of your Uber rides to the comedy store, up to $34 in value. Thank you so much. Jeff Crabtree, the Iron Patriot, everybody. Right. Thank you for coming on. Look at that. Jeff, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff Crabtree, everybody. Yeah, the guy can talk, huh? Hey, Jeff Crabtree. With a long Jeff Crabtree. You let me well when he leaves. I don't know. Jeff Crabtree, everybody. The Iron Patriot. There he is. He was great, wasn't he? Cheers, everybody, to a beautiful day. Many more scandals coming up. Jeff Crabtree, everybody. Jeff Crabtree, everybody. All right. So we've got a lot more show to do for you. You saw that, the Iron Patriot. People didn't know that that guy was coming on. What a nice surprise. And I believe he's still here. And uh, he could just kind of hang out in the background while I do the show. That's fine. It's just kind of like having an aquarium of an Iron Patriot, of Fred Armisen type of guy. I love this guy. I hope he doesn't get mad. Does he look mad? Is he behind me? He's grinning very loud. Is he going to be mad? No, he's not. He loves you. Oh, he loves me. I love this guy. We'll just let him sit there. I thought he was great. I thought he was great. Not everybody is... You know what? I'm just going to say I thought I he was great. I love the stories. I so, could listen to Tony being a dick all day. I mean, for so an it, hour. This is kind of like not us having day. the Iron Patriot on our show. Yeah. This is our new head of security here. Look at that. I can see why Tony might have... <laughs> No, I can't. I, and Tony is an evil guy, and that was just uh, you know one of the many people who are going to start coming forward. We've got a lot of Me Plus, Too Tony stories. Tony fears this man. Don't forget. Tony does. And Tony, he the last thing Tony skin. wanted to happen was for us to get a hold of Iron Patriot and listen to his stories. Um, I wanted to um, to show you this. He's still behind me, isn't he? Old Tony tweet about silencing opinions. You know, this is Tony Hinchcliffe, and it's so funny that he's trying to silence us because look at, remember, these are some of his. I don't know if I could do the show with Jeff Crabtree. <laughs> yeah. I honestly Just don't feel comfortable right minutes. now. A few more minutes. Until it's break time. How about we do this? I don't know if Jeff has ever heard Tony's song, his big song. How about we do this? We listen to Slop Top. Finally, this was a big we song. Could do a dance break. I don't know if he's ever heard Slop Top. I think he's gonna like this. This is uh, Tony Hinchcliffe featuring. Wait, you know what I gotta do with this guy? Because we're gonna start hearing him. This is Tony Hinchcliffe featuring uh, Joe Rogan, and it's a big song called Slop Top. Here we go. I'm excited for you. You can find this on YouTube, by the way. Uh, I didn't stay drunk. I just had a, a drink or two. Would you ever consider guys getting a dick sucked by guys? Hell yeah. It just makes me feel good. Brain drop. Swap top. Smoking no cook in the hot pot. Smoking on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. I love gay. Swap top. Very good. Swap top. Swap top. Smoking no cook in the hot pot. Rape me. Smoking on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. I love. I get. Swap top. Everything's like penis. 
Everything's like gay. Everything's like butt cheeks. Everything's like hey. You have a very nice sized penis. Oh yeah. But what the fuck is in my mouth? Penis. Rape me. Buggy. This is on YouTube right now, and it's got this beautiful, look at this beautiful EDM cover. I really love this, and you can see what Tony's doing to Joe Rogan. There's Joe Rogan standing there. Look what Tony's doing to him. It's called Slop Top. Uh, it's up to 1,200 views, doing pretty well. I here. just posted the link in the chat, so anytime Tony posts something, why not yes. post Slop Top? Every time Tony posts something, reply with this link. Let's get it out everywhere. It's called Tony Hinchcliffe featuring Joe Rogan, Slop Top. Find it on YouTube. Put it everywhere. <laughs> Dave Gibson, listen to the ending. Faggot on Comedy Central. Cheers. Comedy Central didn't bleep it. <laughs> they didn't bleep it once. What does that tell you? Ah. I'm a faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I don't know if Jeff likes that. Doesn't seem like he did. He does. Oh, he, he does, does like it. <laughs> I love Crabtree. You know, Crabtree, there might be... Uh, we should talk over email. I'm not going to put your volume up because it's too much. It's we should talk risky. over email. What if we had a segment where maybe once a month we did something with you as Iron Patriot where you where you Skype in like this in the Iron Patriot suit and we do a little back and forth once a month. No big deal. Five minutes. And maybe we'll get you back into the system here. You deserve to be back in comedy, I think. What do you think? Jeff, 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 Jeff. Because this guy, he really, he's, I didn't kill Tony. I'm going to tell you this. I honestly would never have watched that, but I saw that there was this guy in the Iron Man suit, and I said, wait a minute, this is more than just some shitty podcast. There's a guy in an Iron Man suit. I'm going to tell you this. You might have a case because uh, you got me to tune in. Imagine how many other people tuned in because of your character on the show, and then as soon as the show starts taking off, they get rid of you because they didn't want to pay you. That's the real story. They didn't want to pay you. And Tony has made, I'm not kidding, Tony bought a Corvette. Red Band bought a Tesla. They're making a lot of money off this show that was built by you. You were the third co-host on this show. I like you better this way. <laughs> you know what? You can't put on the Iron Man suit now, could you? You could. Do you want to come back in, in five minutes with the suit on and do a little back and forth? Well, oh, can I oh. talk to you? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, well, hold you, on. Yes, of course. Here, here he is. We need to... Do that on another time because oh. it takes like 30 minutes yeah. to put okay. that on. It's really totally hard. Fair. How about this? Next week, same time, same place. You was yeah, uh, I'll do it. If Iron you want to try to do it, I've been wanting to try that. I never, I was almost going to do it on this one, but it didn't happen. Yeah. But I can do it next week. Let's do it again. I would love that. We're the new kill, Tony. You're welcome here. And we're going to, you know what? We're going to put you back in that spotlight. You deserve it. You're I a great character. We're going to get you back up there. Thank you, Jeff Crabtree, oh, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Great thank you support. For the support, Mike. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you next week, hopefully. Okay. I'm going to go off. I'm going to go do Uber now. Great. Have, Have a, a good day, day and we're going to okay. send you some money. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Is this live, or is this going to be posted live. later? We're live right now, but we are going to post later. I'll send you the link so you have it, okay? Later on today? It'll be up tonight? It'll be up tonight, and I'll send you a link, okay? Beautiful. I'm looking forward to watching. Jeff Crabtree, everybody. I'm going to smoke down and watch it and love it. You're a great Yay. guy. I love this fucking guy. Red Bar, the new okay. Kill Tony. Bye, Jeff. Thanks. Can I get him off the screen? Delete Skype from the computer. Get him out of here. It's Kill Bar. I was five and he was six. We rode on horses made of sticks. He wore black and I wore white. He would always win the fight. Bang bang. He shot. Oh, I like this song. Just bang, let me. Bang bang. I hit the ground. Bang bang. bang. That awful sound. Bang bang. bang, bang. My baby shot, shot me, me down. down. Jeff Crabtree. 
I talked. I, I don't like doing interviews. I'll tell you that right now. I don't like doing them because you like to be the talking guy. I like to be the talking guy. I'm going to tell you something about me. That was a tough one to crack, and especially he couldn't see me. Okay, so he could only hear me. He couldn't see my visual cues. You put some tape over I the put camera tape over ever the camera. since Piranha saw your flip-flops. Exactly, because from the knee down, I am wearing what's called uh, like George of the Jungle pants. They have triangles where the knee goes. It's all ripped up and I'm wearing nothing on my calves. I don't need people seeing me from this angle. I've developed this angle. It's a very safe angle of the show. I put a piece of tape over here. He couldn't see me. He can barely hear me. I was at negative seven. DB! And he's also insane. So Insanely uh, cool. And he has I don't like doing interviews. This is me during an interview. They start talking. I start blacking out. I don't know about you. Uh, I was the kid in school where the teacher starts talking. 45 minutes goes by and I go, I don't know what the teacher said. I haven't been listening for 45 minutes. When people start talking to me, I ain't listening to a word they're saying. So uh, I don't like doing interviews, but I thought he I was great. His energy, I thought he was great. I loved his willingness to tell us gossip. He just has to condense the gossip into a more hard hitting format. Exactly, and it's very and then we're tough. Gonna be the best but friends. Piranha was like that too. Remember Piranha? <laughs> Piranha was like that too, where, you know, some people do these, and especially a Skype interview, they just start fogging. Well, normally rough. when you're being interviewed, people want to ask you about yourself. Yeah, I don't but care about. But we just want to ask them about, about Tony. our specific mm. questions. So that's why it's hard. <sighs> that ran me a little dry. 